name is Nick Francis. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Brooklyn Vendor Assurance. This is Chapter 4 in the BVA Risk Management, the Basics course. This is an introduction to risk management and the basic principles to apply when managing vendors at scale. In Chapter 3, we spoke about converting what I'd learned in the earlier chapters into a sort of corporate language and a corporate setting. Uh, in Chapter 4, we pick up some of the phrases that came up in Chapter 3, such as KPIs, KRIs, and KCIs, um, or Key Performance Indicators, Key Risk Indicators, and Key Control Indicators. So we're going to go through them now and sort of take a deeper look at what each of them mean. So the first one, key performance indicator. Um, this is an indicator to define, or for an organisation to define its performance targets and goals and objectives. Um, it's a way of monitoring progress towards a desired outcome. Um, and a key performance indicator is a, way, is a way of doing that. It essentially says, in short, are we achieving the desired level of performance against our objectives? They can be both financial and non-financial, um, leading or lagging, we'll come on to a bit of the leading or lagging bit later, or they can be quantitative, so volume metric or qualitative um, quality uh, in nature. The difference being for a key risk indicator, um, this is an indicator used to define whether its risk profile is changing or looking at how that activity might cause a change in risk profile. Um, KRIs are typically used to address the question, how, how is our risk profile changing and is it within our desired levels of tolerance? And we'll come back to uh, appetite tolerance in a later chapter also. Again, like KPIs, they can be financial and non-financial and leading or lagging. Um, again, qualitative or quantitative in nature. Um, the KPI again, remember, tells us if we are achieving our child targets. The KRI helps us understand in the way we are going about achieving our targets is what is it doing to our risk profile, what's the impact and likelihood of achieving our overall objective. Um, the KRI should have formed a discussion around risk maps and risk matrix and, and looking at a holistic view of how your risk landscape is shaping up. That we will come on to in a later chapter as well. Key control indicator. So this is an indicator that is used by an organisation to define its control environment and the day-to-day -day measures it looks at um, to, to, to answer a simple question is are we in control uh, or in short um, what's the chance of the, the risks that we've identified uh, crystallising and becoming an issue. So if an organisation isn't seeing any negative movement on its key controls or its control environment, it's unlikely that a KRI will be triggered or a risk event will be triggered. So in terms of it becoming an actual issue. If that does happen and nothing was triggered or, or there was no negative trending on a key control indicator and you still have a risk event happen, then there's a, a process that needs to go through and identify and potentially it means that there's a key control indicator that was missing that would have informed that risk. So you go back in to look at uh, in how, that, how that risk profile was made up, the control environment or the key controls around that that indicated that risk was going to occur and you'll likely find that there was a, uh, something missing and you'll be able to learn from that event and make sure you put the control in place for the future so it doesn't happen again. So pretty quickly they were the, the narratives around key performance indicator, key risk indicator and a key control indicator. So how do we use them? So there's a template actually at the back of the pack that we'll share as well that will give you an opportunity to use this going forward with your own planning but ultimately if we take the flow of how these should be documented and going back to an earlier chapter in the way that we laid it out so from business objectives into what the value drivers around that into KPIs, KRIs and KCIs key, key, key you start to build up a picture of well, if your business objective is for example here increase your revenue um, there's a number of actions you would take to look to increase your revenue that is going to look to increase availability of your product set and then more product being out there. One of the key performance indicators you might look at for this is stock going out of the stock warehouse. So if it's going out, it must be being sold. On the inverse, you start looking at what you don't want from a risk perspective is, as much as you want stock going out, you want it to go out for the right reasons and then to be monetized and lead to increasing your revenue. You don't want to be a wasteful, inefficient organization that is negative against your objective. Um, so in which in this case, if that's your risk, um, some of the key control indicators you might look at is that space in your warehouse is breached. So you've actually got too little space. You've ordered too much and, and you're over capacity. That's a lagging indicator. And to the point I made earlier, there's leading and lagging. So you can have a leading indicator is a prescriptive or predictive measurement, should I say. Um, uh, for example, the percentage of people wearing hard hats on a building site is a leading safety indicator. So the fact that you have people on the site that are wearing hard hats, they are protected against something falling on their head, that is a leading safety indicator. A lagging indicator is the output piece. So, for example, in the same opposite of how many people are wearing a hard hat on the site, there's the number of accidents on a building site. Is something bad has happened and you've captured that measurement and that's the lagging indicator. So in this case, space in the warehouse being breached is lagging because you, the problem's happened, the key control has been moved 
and, and breach this effect, and that's a lagging indicator. Average stock item age, meaning that stuff sitting on the shelf for a long period of time, could also be a, a key control indicator, as could orders versus sales increasing. So you're making more orders to get stock in than you are sales going out. And that's a leading indicator, because if you are saying, how much am I selling, and my ordering is out where I'm selling, if you haven't got foresight of a big order that's about to come in, then potentially that's a leading indicator and the leading KCI that might address back to the risk of being a wasteful and inefficient order. You can use this same approach just to keep going on the same business objective. And for example here, the value driver being reduced lost sales. So by nature, if you reduce the lost sales, you're going to increase the revenue because it's the direct opposite. And you can go through the same exercise again, KPI, KRI, KCI, etc. And you just keep going. You can add different business objectives or the same value drivers off of the same business objective. And you can see over time how you would build that up. Next time we're going to talk about chapter 5, which is around third-party risk management relating what you've learned to the vendors you manage. Thank you.